Yeah. Okay, so let's start with Josh. Yes. Josh is a... Okay, let's go. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Josh. Uh, I've been dancing popping for 10 years. Um, right now I'm working in the Ministry of Law. I'm doing legal policy. Uh, before that I was, uh, I was a lawyer for about uh, one year. Um, yeah, and that's what I did. So, Hi, my name is Bolo. Um, I think for me, right, I have a little bit of different situation from the rest of the guys who are staying here, and girls. Sorry. Yeah, because I actually started dancing after I finished my MS, after I finished my school. So, I didn't start very young. But at the same time, I also like been dancing for 10 years. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and currently I'm spending a, a, a more time in DJing than dancing. So, I'm here to share my experience with everyone as well. Okay? Hi, I'm Surya. Um, I've been dancing for nine years, but locking seven years. Um, currently, I'm working at Universal Studios as a performer, and at the same time, I'm also studying part-time degree. Yeah. Wow, that's like three different roles: yeah. dancer, student, and performer. Full-time and, job. Yeah, yeah full-time job. Oh my god. Yeah. Surya, everybody. This. <laughs> <laughs> I stitch right. It's okay, me too. Just be comfortable. Okay, right. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm Rahim. Okay, I've been dancing for 2006 until now. 12, 12, 11, 12. About 11 years. <laughs> okay, I'm currently running, run, uh, running nasty drills. So that's my. I've been teaching for a while now, like 5, eight, no, 7 to 8 years. Then from there I move, I move on to running my own place because I have a certain vision of my own. So yeah, I'm running that. And yeah, that's about it. We go ahead to the morning. This is a studio. It's a studio that specializes in street dancing in Singapore. Anyway, okay? So he's the owner. Yeah, in case you guys don't know why it's in a studio. Okay, next up we have Melissa Cat Lady. Hi everyone, I'm Mel. Um, uh, I've been dancing for more than 10 years and Currently jobless, I just left University of Singapore. And yeah, I've been teaching since after I left Polytechnic. Yeah. <laughs> hello, hello, that's that. Okay. Hi, my name is Timothy. Um, I've been dancing popping for about eight to nine years. Um, I am currently working full time and I'm gonna be I'm gonna graduate from uh, NTU in December. Yeah, so still studying as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me have the mic. Thank you very nice. Okay. All right. Since okay, let, let's let's see again. Okay, like, do you have any question in mind? Like, show a, a, a raise of hands. Like, if you have any question, one, two, three, raise of hand. How many people have questions? In mind, like you're gonna ask later, not now, yeah. Okay. Ask race, race, one, two, three, race. <coughs> okay, we will warm you up first. Okay, okay. Okay, okay so the first question mm. is to Mr. Josh, Lee, Bolo, and Rahim. Okay, have you ever considered dance as a full time career? What made you decide to pursue or not pursue it? Mm, okay, Josh. So I start first. Okay. Yes, thank you. Um, okay, I I have considered uh, going to full time dance before, um, but my my primary reason for not joining for not being a full time dancer, uh, which I tell a lot of people, which I tell everyone basically when they ask me this, is because um, I feel that when dance becomes my job, um, I treat my job very seriously. When I when I'm really working at something, I treat it very seriously. And sometimes, because of that, the fun gets taken out of it. But the one thing that I love dance about, and which nothing else in my life really does give me, uh, yeah, um, is is that it is that is the element of fun. You know, when I come out, I can forget everything else about my life. Uh, I can turn into a different person. Uh -huh. Yeah, and and then um, just you know focus on dance. 
Um, but when it becomes a job, I think with all the stress, you know, um, keeping your livelihood, keeping your quality, having to, to go around and, 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 and learn from other people, um, because it's a job, makes it more stressful. So that's that's why I don't want. But at the same time, um, there are, there's other reasons as well, because I'm interested in many other things that uh, are quite, you know, not really related to dance. So for example, I'm interested in things like policy making, interested in things like foreign affairs, international relations, technology. So these are things that uh, I, I can, I, I guess I can do elsewhere. And then dance will be like my balance in the other part of my life. So that's why I, I decided not to go into dance full time. Um, yeah, so that's one. All right. Zi Ming, DJ Bolo. Okay. For me, like, like I said earlier, I started dance after I finished my NS, finished my school. So I actually started already working. Then I want to pick up a hobby. How I pick it up, pick up dance, that's another long story. But yeah, for me, dance is like a hobby, you know, like after work, where I work out. Eventually, I know people, I know, I start to get more friends. And then I start to really like this community. If I don't really step into the studio to start my first class, right, I wouldn't know this part of the world, seriously. Because I'll be a normal corporate person. Like you see on the streets. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So for me, that's not. It, it didn't occur to me that I want to pursue dance as a friend, but eventually, it did occur to me that I want to pursue something that is related to dance as a full time, like event organizer, studio owner, etc. So all of them didn't work out, <laughs> sadly. No, but then again, like uh, throughout the whole process, no, like, no more people, all these experiences is very, very, very valuable to me also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now, for me, yeah, I, I still want to put like what Joe said. Like, if you take it as a, as a full time, as your rice bowl, there will be a lot of pressure on how you actually you know, feed yourself, pay your bills. All those. It's not easy in Singapore. It is possible, but it's not that easy. The market is not there yet. It's still growing. So, lucky for most of you all here, like you all start at this time. Like, all of us here have been through harder times. You know? So, yeah, I will say, like, if you really liked it, it's possible. But for us, or for me myself, I wouldn't say for For myself, I it's too late for me to pursue it. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. So yeah, that's my part. I, I believe that uh, a lot of uh, things that Zimi, DJ Bolo go through, like as part of the studio owner before and uh, yeah. actually my first event was with him, me, Melissa and him. It's called Dance Meets Fun Session. Okay, it's really one of the first few events in Singapore for the standing dancers. Okay, uh, it really contribute to who he is today because I think DJ Polo is like the one of the anchor of uh, Singapore street dancing. Like he understand the dancer. He don't just give the dancer what they want. You know, sometimes he have a good balance between like trying to educate them and give them feed them something. Okay. Um, my question uh, uh, is a little bit sensitive, but I don't know if you want to answer this, you can say no. Like, we understand that DJ is kind of like your part-time now, and you are actually very good at it. Like, you start spinning in club, which is not dance event, okay? But dance event was like the first gig that he's been, right? DJ for dance event, but now he's been in a club as well like Solid Go, etc, etc, right? Like, can you tell us a little bit like, <clears throat> so through dancing, you learn DJing, okay? So through dancing, you learn DJing, and now you are a DJ, professional DJ by yourself. Like, how much do you earn a little bit, okay, as a part-time DJ, not full-time, right? You have your full-time job by day, right? Yeah, yeah, do you want to like review a little bit? Like, don't have to be exact, you know? Like, how much do I earn extra? Yeah. A little bit here and there, you know? It really depends, okay? Let's put it this way. I... Okay, through dance, I pick up DJ. Yeah. 
partly because at that time right, I feel that there's not enough DJs for dancing in Singapore. That's one reason. Secondly, I, I, I myself want to pick it up because that's something that I feel like I should try. As a person of part of the, like, try to go into the street culture, you know, the hip hop culture. So eventually I just like it more, so I just keep doing it and buying more stuff, like, more equipment. <laughs> yeah, but um, it really depends because I still have love for the street. There are events that have high budget, there are events who have low budget. Okay. There are organizers that I know, there are organizers that I don't know. You know. So there are a lot of event organizers like Robin. He supported me when I was still like a small DJ. You know, like working with him, right? There are we don't talk the cost about that much. Right? No. For him, I'm okay. For other organizers, right, it depends. I will see the scale of events. The bigger ones, right, it can range from... You don't have to like, yeah, you don't have to talk about this. Just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. average, like... It like, is, okay, uh, the big events, right, it's good enough for you, for you to go for a trip. Oh, That's pretty easy. A short trip. Yeah, you know, those, those are the bigger ones. The smaller ones really like, you know, like just have a good meal with your friends. You know, it's kind of stuff that uh, it really depends who you're working with and what kind of event it is. So, just that answer the question. Thank you for the question. <laughs> Okay, just cut in from this. Um, okay, so I just want to say this. Um, I know everyone just now at the start they might not have questions. Um, it's very, it's very, very understandable because um, you are, there are many things in life that you go through that are difficult, but might not be simple to put into words, right? So um, I, I think that this panel is actually big enough and diverse enough that many of the problems that we have faced before are similar, if not identical, to the problems that you're currently facing. Okay, so if there's any point in time that we say anything that triggers something in you, like, oh, so he's experienced that before, and yeah, that fits what I've experienced now, um, and you can't ask the question straight away, it's okay. Okay, take down the question, you have a phone in front of you, you take it down, okay, just remember that you have this in your, in, in your mind, and raise it later, or Feel free, okay, for me, I, I, I believe so, for the rest of the panel as well, any time you can ask us those, those questions, any time, during this event, outside, Facebook, whatever. Okay, we need this conversation going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. All right, okay, next up we have Rahim. <coughs> hey. yeah. So, let me repeat the question. Have you ever yeah. considered dance as a full-time career? What made you decide to do it or not to do it? Okay, uh, give me one, I just woke up, so... <laughs> Still processing, okay. Uh, I never really thought of it as like, that I want to pursue it, so I started to like sharing first when I was in uh, school, school club. So I was just sharing, then I kind of started to like it. So it was more of a, let's just do it first and see how it goes kind of thing. So I was teaching at a few places, and then as time goes by, I started to really, really like it. And I enjoy uh, like grooming people from scratch to where they get, you know, like get somewhere. And it's just fair. I just feel good about it. So uh, then from there, the, the love for it just grew, and I decided to kind of put like things in place and like a uh, program, training programs, and all that. That's why I started to just pursue it and go with it. Uh, that's why Nasty Juice was born. And yeah, so I want to train people. So I I love, I love doing that. That's the the part of the the full time career thing. Is, uh, but, so it's not just, there, there's many ways to do it like, in Singapore, but okay, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so far I think that's only teaching okay, in terms of like, career, uh, like directly dancing. So yeah, what makes me want to pursue it is that whatever I said, that's not, I just really love teaching. And that's why it's not just about me, it's like coming up with programs, hiring the right people to cater to the program and all that. So, yes. Alright, okay. Uh, I just want to continue from here. Hmm. Do you think it's necessary to be a top tier dancer to pursue a dance related career? Like, like yourself is a dance related career. Like, 
Zimming, DJ Bolo is a dance related career, like Suha herself is a dance related career, like I, I myself is a USS performer, and yeah, I'm okay, might be a little bit drifting, okay, but I always, I'm always in the like, you know, USS, we have like uh, three or four sets of okay, basically, we are performer in that we are mascots, right? So we have a lot of breaks in between because a mascot 20 minutes, right? It's really like, oh my god, it's taxing, man, it's difficult. Yeah, okay, so, and I always practice very hard between my set, and even after I finish my daytime job, right, I will go and practice very hard because I always feel that dance has given me this job. Like, without dance, right, I wouldn't be able to perform and believe in myself. So, all this, right, anything that, like, dance gives you confidence, right, for me, it's a dance-related career, you know? But, yeah, so, back to the question, do you feel that it's necessary to be a top-tier dancer to pursue a dance-related career, Rahim? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. This question goes to Rahim, Timothy, and Melissa. Okay, so yes. I want to know what's the definition of top tier dancer. Top tier dancers is uh, you don't have to be winning all the time, but like people look at you and then they say, mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's only like contenders. Ah, sorry, contenders. <laughs> Like yeah, yeah, like you don't have to be winning all the time, but you are those that like, okay, the moment you step out, I don't, I really hate to do this because I don't like to like cat categorize people, but top tier dancers actually just means that people that win a lot and people that like, con like always at the top four, like the moment they come out, you just like, oh my god, I can't, yeah, top tier dancers. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, to answer that, okay, I think it's it's not necessary, in a sense, but, but, but it's important that you are really good at what you do, depending on your, your the nature of your job. So, uh, when it comes to teaching, you may or may not be a top tier dancer, but uh, if you have the, the knowledge on the history, the foundations, I think you, there's a place for everyone, you know? So there's, there's a place for someone who is very uh, into the history and foundational stuff, so they, they are good for uh, like to teach at beginner level and stuff like that, so the introductory stuff. But there are just, but there are some high level dancers who I feel should go just go out pursue and just battle, just go around the world and just do that. You know, like if, if teaching is not what you love to do, if you just want to have, to have a dance related job, I think try try not to go into teaching. You, you might take away your soul. You, know? you might not. If you don't like it, if you don't love it, you it will take something away from you, and you will not like the art anymore. Yeah. So I think. Uh, if you really love teaching, then teach. If not, don't. Then just give it to someone else. You know, someone else can, be, can do the job better. You can just go out and be a battle monster and just go around the world, do workshops, I don't know. Okay? So that's, 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 that's my take. So you just go at what you do. I think that's fine. Okay. Uh, Melissa? Yeah. Do you want me to repeat a question? Okay. Yeah. Is it necessary to be a top tier dancer to pursue a dance related career? Mm, when I when I see the question when I saw top tier right, yes. my first uh, image is actually not the people who are the top four in the battle. But the first three words that came into my mind was actually discipline, consistency, and relevance. Uh, for me, top tier means um, people who are constantly pushing themselves, always discipline. For me, it doesn't really matter if you win battles because battles is really just at the moment. It's a game. It's just that one game. It doesn't show much of you as a dancer actually. It's really at that spur of the moment. But your hard work goes a long way. Yeah. Yeah, when you lay that strong foundation, it really makes you um, get better and better. And it, that, 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 that is to me what is a top tier dancer. So I feel it's discipline, consist consistency and relevance. A lot of us, some of us, um, there are some dancers who are very good but they only just do for two years and then they lost it. They just don't want it as much. But there are some dancers who, they, there are some dancers who actually don't join battles. They teach outside. And I know of this junior, she has been, the, she's my two years of my junior, right? She has been the 
dance scene. She's not in the street dance scene. She's not a standing dancer, but she's she has been dancing like she's just attending classes. Basically, just attending classes. And recently, she quit her full time job as a NIE teacher to teach dancing. That to me is crazy because she has never stopped dancing. She has never stopped taking classes. She has never stopped learning. And yeah, that to me is consistency. Uh. And I am a top tier dancer. And I feel to pursue a dance related career, no matter whether you are teaching or whether you are going around the world joining battles or you are a DJ or whatsoever, I feel yeah, to be the top tier, you need to have these three. And definitely when you have these three, right, when you have the knowledge, knowledge is power. Okay, once you have power and you prove yourself, right, um, people will naturally listen to you. And you prove yourself on the dance floor, you prove, prove yourself as a person. People will, yeah, just naturally, uh, with power comes great responsibility. So that really, I, 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 feel, <laughs> I really feel sometimes I'm really not a battle, battle kind of dancer, but I I really actually enjoy teaching a lot because same for I mean, I really love seeing dancers from scratch, from really nothing to something. That to me is my greatest satisfaction as a dancer. So, yeah. Alright, thank you, Vanessa. Timothy. Yep. Aka okay, Timothy. Okay, I think Daniel. So, yeah. So, anyway, uh, just to add on to what they said, uh, pursuing a dance related career is also. Uh, depends on your lifestyle as a person, you know what I mean? Because for us in Singapore to pursue a dance related, related career, I don't think like we will earn like maybe 5k, I don't know, it depends definitely. Like you can go into a dance related career, for example, like maybe you can be a organizer as well, okay? For me, when I look at the whole scene, I mean, you can be a dancer, but you do not have to be a top tier dancer to be an organizer. But of course, you also have to have that basic fundamentals of like understanding each scene and the music and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So it really uh, depends on for me the lifestyle that you have. If you if you wanna like live the high life, I mean, definitely the a dance related career cannot support your lifestyle. You know. Yeah. yeah. Many of us didn't choose dance to become rich, you know what I mean? But why along the way so many people change, you know? Instead, you know, a lot of us like we didn't choose dance because we want to become rich, right? It's okay to not you know, not like it's okay to be well like enough and safe for rainy days. But if once you're greedy, that is where yeah, that is where it comes, becomes unhealthy. Okay, moving on. Yes, 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 please. Martin, yes. Okay. Um, I think for, for anyone to go pursue a dance related career or job, right? I think the first few years when you're at it, you gotta be willing to be broke. You gotta be willing to earn like just a few hundred dollars a month. You gotta dress cheap, eat cheap, live cheap, you know? You gotta, you cannot go to the party, go drink, you cannot just go to watch movie and just chill with another. You gotta have to hustle that the first four or five years. You gotta, you have to prove your work first. Your work needs to be out there. Like for example, your teaching, your students, all have to be out there first to prove your quality, to prove your worth, then for you to really pursue it. So if you're not willing to be broke, this, this is, is gonna be very hard for you. Yeah, that's yeah, To a certain extent, sometimes like, you know, like, you choose this job, you choose it because you want to dance. Like you were, you were like, oh my god, if I want this job, I cannot dance there. Every day OT until 9, 10 p.m. How to dance, yeah? Okay, okay, next job, next job, you know? Sometimes to a certain extent. So, leading on to the next question, Surya and Zimin, DJ Bolo, like why do you choose your current job? Yeah. <laughs> It's a very direct, direct answer. Money. Yeah, money. Mm. True, okay. <clears throat> for me, I'm not too sure about the rest, but for me, right, dance actually made me very poor. Because of <laughs> events <laughs> and my studio. Okay. I don't I don't regret doing it. There are some times that I do think back that why do I do it? Okay? 
that is that is the fact. But then I don't regret doing it because there are so many things throughout the whole process that I feel that I managed to push something during those years. Might be indirectly to what's related to you now, or indirectly related to what to them. But I that's small achievement, but then that made me very poor. There are a lot of loans involved. I had to pay off that all of you didn't don't, you don't see. You all think that oh now I can buy equipment, I'll buy this, buy that, buy DJ, buy very short, can earn money to go for a trip. Uh, no. I'm paying off my loans. Okay, I'm investors, you invested. Yeah, upfront. So I what I'm doing right now is what I was doing before I quit my job to make events, which is in the IT line, which is what I learned in school and what I can earn enough to eat and also pay off my bills. So I can tell you directly right now why I choose my current job in the IT industry, money. I used to have passion in the IT field, but not right now. My passion is all in the street culture. Okay, but that which is the beautiful part as well because it's totally not related. Where I can fully put my passion into the street, but then my focus in my work to earn money. So I don't have any stress in what I'm doing off the office to stress like oh ah uh, shit I, I need to really be really good because if I'm not good enough then I don't have jobs I don't have money to eat I don't have to worry about it I just do what I really love to do. You know? that, that's the beauty of it for for my current situation. Okay. Um. Yeah. I think that's that answer. Yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, Surya, why do you choose your current job? Um, actually, after I graduated from poly, I worked part part time in a bubble tea shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I worked at Gongcha last time. Why we don't come? <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah, but it was a part time job, so at the same time, I was going for a lot of interviews. I was studying tourism, so I went to interviews at like hotels and such. But and then I landed into a job at Esplanade. It's like an events job which was very stressful for me. It was shift work and it's stressful to the point that I wasn't happy. So I worked there for like six months and actually for USS, I auditioned like for three years in a row before I could get the job. So right after I got the job, I left my job at Esplanade because it made me unhappy. So now I'm in USS. Um, yeah, the reason why I wanted to be in USS because it's something that makes me happy and Unlike working in a bubble tea shop, every day do the same thing. I was always the cashier, so like every day do the same thing. I don't feel a sense of satisfaction. I don't feel a sense of achievement. At least in USS, I feel good making people happy. I feel good seeing kids smiling. All this, yeah. So that's my purpose. And like just like Timothy and Robin say, it it all depends on your lifestyle. Like how you want your life to be. Like you want to be super rich. Or you want a sense of accomplishment? You have a goal. What motivates you every day? For me, it's it's not just about the money, but I want to be happy at work. Yeah, that's why I'm still in USS now. Yeah. All right. Uh, how do you balance your school, work, and dance? <laughs> oh, um, the answers are okay. Next. <laughs> um, for me, right? If you see my quote, um, it's all about. Studying smart and dance smart. Of course, it's good to be hardworking, but just like studying for me when I study, I don't study every single thing that's required. I try to study smart because with dance, work, and school, you don't have enough time to do every single thing. So, for dancing, for me, one hour, one productive hour without touching your phone, without slacking, is productive enough. As compared to three hours of like suddenly sitting down and chatting with your friends, so time is very limited. Make use of it. Like even when I'm at work, USS, um, because we have breaks in between our shows, right? We have at least three breaks. So in between, when I'm not tired, I will really practice just one hour every every day. And if I don't feel like practicing, I will study. I will do my schoolwork. <coughs> yeah, and it's. It's important not to fall sick, especially during the exam period, mm -hmm. which I had recently because I was busy with like lockdown, KOD exams. 
So the most important thing is sleep and eat correctly. If you fall sick, that's it. Yeah, like you don't feel like studying, you don't feel like dancing. Yeah, so that's how I balance my time. Be healthy and be smart. Alright, thank you, Surya. Okay, uh, Timothy, how do you balance um, There's someone who wants to answer a question. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. Please measure me. Okay, okay Josh. How is it like working at a law firm and balancing dance at the same time? How is it like working at a law firm and balancing dance? 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. kind of schedule. How, how is it like balancing? I think maybe I'll, I'll just answer the question. Yes, yes, yes. This question here, and then you'll tie to that also. So thanks for the question. Uh. Um, okay. I'm sorry to jump. Before I want to you know, answer all these questions, I just want to say first that um, clearly the impression that you get from here may be that you not know, all of us have the answers. But I just want you to know that throughout it all, right, it is all a process of trial and error. Um, you have to try your hand at it. Um, and, and, and then learn the mistakes and then if you need to change course and change as soon as possible and work as hard as possible in the next one. Um, in the background, I also want to say that um, besides just dancing, uh, I teach part-time as in sometimes when Marcus or Rachel, they, you know, they can't make it for their lessons, yep. they ask me to go and teach. Uh, and also I help to organize like uh, alternate control, pop in progress, that series of events. Yep. So that is part of what takes up my time in dance as well. So to answer, your quest answer the question of um, how do I balance school and dance, okay, um, again, I don't want to sound like I have an answer, okay? A lot of it in the last few years was me just muddling through, just finding a way somehow um, through all the negative emotions, through all the negative feelings, the regrets, and somehow just pushing through no matter what, okay? Because I think another word for balance, the flip side of the same coin is sacrifice. Balance means sacrifice. Because you're going for two things with the limited amount of resources, which is time. Which is what everyone faces here. So how did I find my answer? Now, let's go with law school. In law school, in a single week, I can read about a thousand pages of material in a single week. Okay, it's insane. And it's not easy reading, it's not storybook reading. I get bored to tears from reading it, trust me. Have you read Terms and Conditions before? No? <laughs> Try. <laughs> okay, so I have limited time. I don't consider myself a smart person. I'm rather stupid actually. Okay? But how do I do it is that I, 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 I threw away everything else in my life. In uni, in work, I only have two parts of my life. Work and dance. Work is everything. I pour all my attention into it when I work. Okay? And dance is everything else. I do not hang out with friends. I do not go eat supper, I don't go watch movies, I don't go to the gym. Okay, that, that was in uni, la. now it's a bit more balanced, but that was in uni. Okay, everything else was in dance. My, my dance friends were my friends. My supper time was after events, let's go eat. My movie time was at home watching YouTube videos of dance. My gym time, when I practice, I do drills, when I do push-ups. That is my gym time, that's why I save time going to the gym. So that's how I categorized everything, made it efficient, and was able to balance both my work reasonably well with my dance. At the same time, I also opened up a, a club in SMU, SMU Fund Movement. So I had to balance that as well, to manage that as well. So that, that, was, that was the gist of how I managed it. Um, in, in work, um, there's also like, I do the same thing as well. When I'm in the office, right, there are times where, okay, lawyers working time in offices right now on average is this. Report 9 a.m. Sometimes you rough, roughly a bit late, 9 30, that's fine. But you leave office around 11 to 1, 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. That is the state of the legal industry that it is now because they fry the youngest people in the food chain. Okay, so what I do was at night, right, um, when everyone is left, I'm alone. Sometimes I'll sneak into the intern's room and I'll pull out my UE boom and I'll start practicing. At lunchtime, um, 15 minutes after lunch, right, so that's about 2 p.m. Most people feel like they got food coma, right, coming in, digesting your food, right? I'm doing planks under the, the table. It's funny, okay, but if you want to make things work, these are the things that people don't see, but you find your own solution to it. It may sound stupid when you tell people, but who tell you you need to tell people? <laughs> <laughs> I <don't like> that. <laughs> 
who tell you need to tell me? Trust me, uh, every single one of these panel here uh, has done something they feel like ordinary people will find stupid, but it helped them in their goals. Trust me, okay? Now, to answer your question of whether has dance gotten in the way of the job, of course, every single week, every single week, at least one time I'll face the question of whether I need to focus on dance or I need to focus on my work, my, my job. Okay, and this ties into what I said just now, balance is basically sacrifice. Okay, every every week I have to find um, 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 yeah, that, that time. So, um, the most important thing is that at the back of my head, I'm always looking at it from an overall point of view. Have I pushed too far in one side? Have I gone to the extreme in one side? Have I been focusing too much on my work, such that I'm black face everywhere? Okay, then I need to you know release a bit, I need to go and practice. Okay? Um, have I been dancing too much? Do I feel like too relaxed? I feel like, oh my work, there's other stress building up because things are not getting done. Then I focus on my work. Okay? Then I find that in doing this, because I changed the, 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 the environment that I'm in, right? It makes me focus more on the thing that I want to do at that point in time. So I don't know if this will help you. Um, I'm finding that it works so far, roughly. And uh, if you have any problems, you know, let me, let me add on to a short story. A lot of you think that you guys are hard workers, right? But you know Josh? He eats caffeine tablet to stay awake so that he can dance and study and work. That's something you're not supposed to tell. That's the stupid thing. That was, that was only once or twice, like the rush of presentation overnight. So, so that was amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. Sometimes, sometimes when you have events, right, uh, what I also do is I'll sit at one corner, you won't see me, I'll just disappear. I'll be sitting in one corner studying. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's smart. Okay, being a full time student in NTU, pursuing degree, Timothy. Can you tell us how does it affect, like, does dance affect your, your school? For sure. <laughs> so, um, for me, as a student, I'm not like uh, your first class, second class. I'm not even, the, I think I'm third class. Like, low class. <laughs> so, at the moment, because for me, I... For me, as... Be, even way before I wanted to apply to the university, I, I had this big debate, you know, you know, should I just focus on dancing and practicing, or should I just go to go and study and try to have a balance. But, and then, uh, come up May, my mom asked me to apply, so I know I had to be a good son and follow my, my mom's orders. So, I... In uni, it was a pretty tough for me, especially during the first few years. Like, especially from poly to uni, it's, it's not easy. Uh, and when you go to the army, when you go to the U, you forget everything that you have learned in poly. And then when you go to the U, it's like, huh, I will learn this in poly, man. <laughs> so, so um, for the first year in the U, it was quite difficult for me to, to balance studying and dancing. Uh, but I made it work somehow in terms of like I try my best to to show up at practice I, even though it was, it was like a full day of studying and then at night practicing so this this went on for like for the first year for the second year I just I just made my mind and say you know I'm not I don't want to be like the normal Singaporean or I need to get a second upper uh, second lower at least a second lower I mean that was my choice so in terms of like what you want to achieve as a worker in Singapore, that is ultimately your choice. So if you want to get a second upper, please go ahead. Like don't, don't use my example. Like for me, I really gave up studying in the in the U. So almost every almost every subject or module, I only just like scrape through everything, just scrape through because I focus my time more on dancing. And I was lucky enough to be in the engineering side of in, in the U, so every lecture was recorded, so I didn't have to go to school. <laughs> so, but but in a way, in a way, uh, the consequence was during during uh, when it was nearing to lecture uh, exam time, I had to like watch like sixteen lectures in one day. <laughs> yeah, because I skipped every 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 week. 
他是在啊 ，next week watch 了 ，next week watch 了 ，next week watch 了 ，next week yeah， exam for you， 那那他就 like OK， 他来一段，他来一段，他来一段，他来一段，他来 everything， you know what I mean？ Yeah， so yeah， but ultimately that my lifestyle in the U was study dance， study dance， study dance， if I have time meet my girlfriend， if I have time uh go chill with my friends， my my crew， you know what I mean？ So it was pretty tough. It was pretty tough. It's pretty like it was every day was like the same, 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 same. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that Timothy is a very dedicated teacher and a very passionate dancer as well. Top. Yeah. He's one of the top tier. Top tier. Okay. Uh, Jean. Jean. Um. Yeah. Please pass the mic to Jean. Jean, please tell us something about yourself. Like, how have you been these few years? <laughs> what have you been doing? <laughs> I will be better if you all turn around and look at the many go round go later. I'm just, I'm just kidding. No, no, I'm not. I'm not kidding. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, okay. I just short intro about myself. Okay. Uh, if I start track, please tell me. Ah. Uh. So I've been dancing for fourteen years. Whoa. Yeah, a lot, a long time. I started when I was twelve years old. My first teacher was Patrick Lu. Some of you may not know him. Some of you may know him. Okay. So uh. Yeah, I started dancing when I finished my PSLE, and then after that in secondary school, I still take some time, uh, take some of his lessons here and there, and then I join modern dance in uh, secondary school. So I kept the dance going and all, and then when I went to poly, I went to join. I was from RP, but they let me join uh, foreign bodies. Uh, so that was when I started locking. So I've been start, I've been locking for nine years now. So uh. What I'm doing now is I'm just teaching and dancing and performing when the shows and also emceeing and also running a small business with Mel, and then uh, I do design here and there, just like really little design when people just ask me to do that I do. Okay, so yeah, that's kind of how I earn my money and to keep myself alive and put food on the table. So. Nice. Yes, I think that's the. Okay, we understand that you are a dance instructor by day. Hi. Okay. And can you tell us the difference, like being like, like what do you have to be to be a dance instructor to the, like all the tertiary schools and stuff? To tertiary schools, yeah. Like, okay, so, uh, I don't know anything. One last time, it's just that oh, I'm a dancer. People know me as like, hey, uh, there's this job that you want to do and teach. Yeah. So like, uh, there are actually companies around, even studios. They will have like. Projects with schools, and then they will bid on the projects, and then the school will like, okay, I want you to teach my primary sixers, uh, because it's after their PSLE. Maybe give them six lessons. Then on the six lesson, they have a small performance. There's this kind of things happening right now, which don't happen in my time. We we just had line dancing. That's it. Yeah, really, really, and yeah, just just that kind of thing. So that is one way of income. As a dancer, okay, and you need to get all sorts of certi certifications, and I think this is something that uh, we don't. I don't know about even until now. I'm still quite clueless until people tell me, "Hey, you have to get this." They are like, "Oh, okay," because I don't like this kind of admin stuff, you know. And I think a lot of us become dancers because we don't really like admin stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, if you want to teach at secondary schools or just schools in general, you kind of need all these kind of certifications. It's not hard to get. And that is a problem as well because it's just a quality benchmark thing. But people who don't really want to teach, they can get this, and then they can go and teach. So imagine the students that come out and have that impression of that street dance. You understand what I'm saying? So how to become a top tier? Uh, no, 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 no. Like, okay, being a being a have, uh, the okay. one of the most famous instructor in Singapore. His <laughs> class always boom 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 boom. Body. Right now, lah. Right now, okay. Mm. Like, do you have different categories of students? Like, I'm I'm sorry to say this, but if like, I'm sure there is like teaching in tertiary schools, right? Mm. It's a different. You have to go in with a different mentality. Yes. Yes. And like even in teaching in studio, like you have to understand like sound. Like there's different kind of lesson. Can you give us some example? Okay. So first of all, as like Rahim said, right. Uh, the job opportunities as a dancer in Singapore is very limited. You can either be a very famous dancer like Ho Wan, right, going around the world giving workshops, but it's hard because you really need to train your ass off and you need to know. This one is reality. You need to know how to market yourself. There are very good dancers who don't know how to market themselves. Understand? And then when it, 
you just don't go for their classes because they are not famous, you know? Second thing is, you can be a performer. Performer is like uh, Amin, you know Amin? Yeah, Amin is a real good, you know, like dancer and he's a performer for shows and I don't even know how to get there because, yeah, you know, for street dance, for us to do locking in Esplanade, I don't think it's easy. Yeah, but it will come through one day, okay? Third thing is teaching. And there's, uh, performing is something that we loogie also because we don't have pop stars in Singapore. If you go to Taiwan, you got show law. If you go to America, there's so many, understand? But then in Singapore, it's like, they don't even support the local artists yeah, here. They use Taiwanese you know? dancer. Eh? Yeah, so, you know, that kind of sucks. And, yeah, lor. so teaching, teaching is like the main key. So, my students, age ranges from two and a half years old to uni students, and sometimes older. Okay, so how do I, you really, if you want to teach, you really need to love teaching. I love teaching more than I love dancing now, I realized. Yeah, that's why like, you see Mohin and Sonika here, like the kids. Yeah. yeah, so let me tell you, it's easier to teach in a studio because when you teach the students, right, most likely they paid money and they want to learn. But then when you go and teach a secondary school, uh, that's the hard part, the primary school, that's the hard part. Okay, this is where your skills as a teacher and an engager comes in. Yeah, I suck at teaching secondary school students. I, I suck at teaching Paikia. Yeah, really, really. I, like, I, I don't enjoy it, but every time I take up this kind of job, I will try to challenge myself. Until now, I still cannot get it. I still cannot connect. Yeah, it's not easy. So, if you want to consider this line, then you must be, you must really have a passion for teaching. It's so different from dancing. You need to know how to break down steps. You need to know how to engage. You need to know how to make it look interesting enough so that your students are enjoying it, you know? And for studio-wise, like at Converge, why the students search right now, right? I think it's a lot of, I, I don't know if it's true, but I think because I have been very uh, consistent in my putting up the videos and all, so maybe people like it and they come, come for classes. Yeah, it's not exactly what I really, really 100% want to teach. But for an open class, if it works, then it's good. I'd rather take it as a gateway, you know, it's kind of like a gateway when people go and take a class, they like locking, okay, I want to find out more. Yeah, but if you go straight into, okay, I need you to do the tour properly, people are not going to go for your class anymore because it's going to be boring, right? Only when you have the mindset of, I want to be good, okay, then I want to train my tour. If I'm just going to spend my one hour, I already have work, my, my boss drew me how to do this Excel sheet, now you drew me how to do 12, god damn it, you know? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, you need to know how to find the balance. I took, when I started uh, teaching and dance people, right, I was in the army. Every Sunday, book, book in day, uh, mind you, one o'clock I go there, nobody, uh, there's, no, there's, no, there's no students. I just session one hour, then I go back, then prepare my field back, then I book in. Damn sad, uh, <laughs> really damn sad. So, I'm, I'm sure all of us come a long way. Teaching street dance, if you want to earn a lot of money, can. But you really need to work freaking goddamn hard for it. Like really. Yeah, but I'm still not rich yet, lah, so I'm still... If you look at my quote, I'm, I'm still figuring out shit. Yeah. Oh, you got a question? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. You know what? I, I, after this question... Okay, yeah, please, please, sorry. Yeah. Uh, my question is about teaching, lah, because like... Uh, I... Uh, yeah, like, I believe that when we teach, like, and then when we share, right, the knowledge will get passed on. So, like, it's very important for us to like, share the right things. Like. So, like, uh, the certificates that I say just now is one thing. But then, like, how do we know that we are ready to step up and, like, share our work with other people so that we don't spread the wrong knowledge? How to know you are ready? How to know you are ready? Yeah. <coughs> I'll just add on this bit for you. Okay, where we came from, right, in the past, right, we don't have, we don't really have knowledge at all. What we have, right, is watching DVDs. Okay, I, we have, even have to ship in those DVDs to learn. Okay, and then we just pick up what we have. Is if you have something that you know that someone else don't know, that is what you can teach them. The most important part is, right, if you know you are wrong, admit that you are wrong, and then pass out the information. That is the most important part. <coughs> the bad part is right, there are people who know they are wrong, but they don't admit it. They hold it and then they, they, they start talking shit about those people who are doing it right. Yeah. So it's it's, it's okay to teach. But then it's, it's I won't say it's okay to teach the wrong things, but when you know that you are in the wrong, do tell them that. 
This is what I learned and I, I taught you the wrong things before. This is the right things that you should follow. Okay? Does that help you? <laughs> yep. I think there's so much knowledge out there that even if you go 100%, there's still a lot of knowledge right now. Like the OGs that we see now are not the only OGs right now. There are still a lot of underground people. So I think it's really just, if you can face your conscience and do your best, I think that's the best thing you can do. Because even the OGs are saying different things. So it's very hard for us to pinpoint. I'm just a Chinese born from Simei. I'm taking a culture from LA. You know, so it's, it's so far, you know. Nah? So I think it's really just like, if you can face your conscience and you know that you do, did your best and really admit that you are wrong. There are things, I've been looking for nine years, there are things I found out like two months ago, that kind of thing, you know, like, just high say, you know, like, probably Terry like, yo, you, you didn't watch this documentary and you're a locker, they're like, uh, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> so like, <laughs> yo, it's always a learning process, you know, really, that's, it's always just a learning process, like, of your honesty. Yeah, so really, I'm locking for nine years, there's still so many things I haven't learned yet. I haven't even, even been to, like, uh, I haven't met Don Campbell and all yet, so I still, you know, yeah, there's still a lot of things for us to work on. Because you gain, you ain't got time. Hey! hey. <laughs> okay, next. Go into a very interesting segment. Okay, so that's an inside joke anyway. This is just showcase. He used the song I Ain't Got Time. Okay? Yeah. Okay, we're going to a very. Can you pass this flag? Everybody read and write that one. Sorry. Okay, so now, okay, we, this is what we're gonna do. Like, short question. No, not gonna, like, with any explanation. Just, if you have any question in mind, just raise your hand. I will go to you. I'll give you the mic. And then you just ask a question. They will say yes or no. Okay, okay, quick, quick, quick. Uh, yeah, anyway, just welcome uh, everybody. I see a lot of people walking in. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, it's good, it's good. Okay, question number one. So, what? Which one is yes? Uh, red is yes. Okay, red is yes. Red is no. How much? What's the casual? Red is yes. What is no? Can all the red be on your left? Okay, okay, okay no. All the, all the red be on your right because you are right. <laughs> so, for you, you are right. You understand? <laughs> That's a good for those Jakantang people. You are right, remember? Huh? <laughs> okay, so short questions. Yes or no? Okay. Please, okay. First question, everybody. Let's go. Whoever have a question. Question, anybody. Let's go. It can be any question. Okay. It's a bit of a longer question. <laughs> if you all have an uh, opinion, can just elaborate. So, three dance in the Olympics. Red for yay, white for nay, and why? Uh, okay, one, two, three. Street dance in the Olympic. <laughs> Judges, three, two, one. What? What? Okay, no, no. Yeah, okay, next one. Do not break the flow, okay? Let's go. Anybody have a question? Come on, anything. Like, do you have a girlfriend or boyfriend? <laughs> have your parents ever objected to you dancing? <laughs> no, no. Yes, yes. yes. You are right. <laughs> Okay. Maybe I'm confused with you. <laughs> Red is yes, white is no. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so one more time. Have your parents ever object to your to you dancing? Always. Okay, next question. Always. Yes, Jody. Uh, right for fashion, I understand. Uh, so like, which one which one is yeah, which one in your opinion? Right for passion, which is red, and white for discipline. Passion, passion and discipline. Passion, discipline, passion, 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 passion. Passion card, anybody? Okay, next question. Nobody from here asking question. Yeah, come on, guys. It's your chance. Any question? You can tell me I'm for you also can. Okay, I ask one. Do we have the same goal for when you start? Do we have the same goal uh, for dance when you start? I love it. I love this. Wow. Hey, Marissa, what's that? We have more goals now. Oh! Wow. It's trouble. We wanted to have one, but now there's so much more to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have NSYNC then. Okay. My goal is to get a lot of... Because like some of you have very crazy schedules already, right? As being part of the street culture, uh, do you see yourself or do you want to start a family in the future? Like, <laughs> Whoa! Oh, okay. <laughs> Dancing. Come on, some questions. Anybody? Let's go. Fair enough. Fair enough. Gloria. Hello, Glow. At least IG. Still okay. Like, In your opinion, is it okay to have like dancing to, to be dancing different styles? Multiple styles. Different multiple styles in your opinion. What's the one? Like popping, locking your okay? Is it okay? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> but it takes it takes a lot of your time. So like you're gonna be a, unless you're damn freaking good at it, but you should, if not you're just gonna be like a jack of all trades kind of thing. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just be it's just yeah. But to add on to that, right, the more styles you do, right, that the better dancer it makes you. Yeah, true that. Hong Kong plus choy. Yeah. <laughs> but it's all wrong, alright. That's the beautiful thing about this. Beautiful. <laughs> Next. Next. I got a question for the panel. Okay. Uh, you also you, 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 <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> This, this is for everyone, right? Uh, this is for, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you feel that dance has ever treated you unfairly before? Unfairly? Yeah, but the question is the. I declined to answer. <laughs> Sorry, I watched too much suits now. <laughs> uh, but, but, but I feel that it's a bit unfair to in the, in the scene, I can see the unfairness. Like, I see a lot of very good dancers being broke and. Sorry to say, but there are a lot of not so, you know, getting all the jobs, you know, and stuff like that. So, the unfairness is not towards me, but towards the people. I just feel that like there's a lot of really, really good dancers who are not earning enough, which I feel that they should be the one getting those jobs. But maybe we are just not good at what you say, marketing ourselves. So, I think we got, I think, good dancers, you all got to learn how to sell yourself as well. So, if not, nobody, you're not going to get the jobs. Correct. That's something I want to add on. There, there are a lot of uh, certification out there for us to take, and these certifications, right, are the are the ones that can get us jobs. So I feel that um, I don't know how we're gonna do it, but then I, I'm not too sure. So, but then I think we should have like a like a union thing to educate all of us, so that we can actually provide good teachers and people with knowledge to the schools. You know, cause there are people. There are companies bidding for the schools at like what twenty dollars per hour, and that's for the company. So imagine how much they pay the teachers. Maybe five to six dollars an hour. Eh? That's like McDonald's rate, you know. No, I'm saying that if you are gonna have this kind of teachers to teach the younger generation in our country, yep, yep. it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt all of us. Yeah, and I just have one point to. This is something I feel very strongly. Okay, how many of you love dance? Okay, down. So, uh, okay. So for locking scene, right? When we started, we wanted to create the scene, but now it's time for us to sustain it. Okay. So I just want to say this thing. It's very sensitive. 
How many of you joined recitals before? Uh, how many of you are interested to join again? Or like, uh, you all like the experience of it? Okay, how many of you joined performance in school before? They are mostly led by our seniors, right? So let's say if you join a recital, most likely the teacher is a full-time dancer, am I correct? So recital, do you pay up more than $100 for recitals? Anybody? Anybody? Just let me know. So do you train up more than 15 hours for recitals? Hands up if you train more than 15 hours for recital. Yeah, so technically the teacher is not receiving any money, right? So how does that make any sense? Sing Chi is to You need to invest in your interest. <laughs> You need to, you need to, you need to invest in your interest. I'm not saying we are out to take your money, but then if you are continuing this kind of tradition, then I feel that a lot of times the teachers will start to leave, and then they don't want to teach anymore, and that's when the knowledge will die with them because we cannot eat, we cannot survive. So I feel that instead of getting a new Stussy shirt, you know, go and invest in something that you claim to love. This is something that I hope y'all will share with your friends, those who are not here. It's a food for thought. I took, I, I took Chunky's Restarter as well. It's very short for a student to pay $25 registration. Then I get 20 hours of, of training. And then I get to wear nice costumes. And then I get to get to perform. Then people can't take pictures of me. Then post on Instagram, you did a very great job. And that's all for $25. Right? Time to think about it. Next time, if you become a teacher and this tradition lives on, it's gonna hurt you as well. So I think this is something nobody really wants to talk about, but I really gotta say it out. It's time for us to, money is a sensitive issue, yes, but if we, it's, it's reality, man. You know, we don't need to earn like a thousand from you each, but maybe just give us a reasonable amount, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, it helps to keep the circle going. Okay, so, if you hate me for saying this, then you know what? Don't come to my restart or anything like this. Because I ain't got time! Okay, questions, moving on. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, with relation to what Jin just said, uh, um, I'm not sure how many of you guys have gone overseas before to take classes. So recently I went to Korea. The classes are really expensive. So like they, they price up to like uh, 30 US dollars, 60 US dollars. Do you find that you guys have any enough in Singapore? By open classes and all that? No. Straight up. Yeah. Like judges, three, <laughs> two, one. <laughs> what was the question again? I was <laughs> Chapters in Singapore get paid enough you know, compared to other countries. Yes, yes, yes. So, um, rate for maybe below $25. Oh, this one? Yeah. <laughs> this one cannot say. Uh. This one like mean. your, your preference. Uh. Oh. And uh, white for above. Uh. So, what do you think? Uh, people paying or we earn? Uh, people paying, like per student. $25 for one and a half to two hours, I think it's okay. Uh, honestly. Eight? No, that's a like good shop pricing. I think I think it's okay. This one is my elaboration, but of course I caveat no experience as a as a full time teacher, right? But I think that um, the value that you should be paying for a class right, is depending. It depends from teacher to teacher, so you can't put an exact monetary value to it. You can't say, oh, it's twenty five dollars. No, I say it's twenty four fifty, <laughs> right? But but the fact of the matter is that everyone feels that regardless of their level, regardless of the experience with which they bring. The, the lessons that they can bring to the class, they feel that more can put in. Yeah, that's what I feel. I want to elaborate. So, uh, I think students are not to blame as well because they really need to fit in the market and everything. Because if one student charge very high, they will definitely lose business, especially when Singapore is very small. So going back to the recital thing, money is something we put value at, right? In a way. So like a lot of times, in school, school, uh, school performances, right? It's normally free, right? So who choreographed for school performances before? Do you get a lot of people every week telling you, hey, I cannot make it today. Hey, I cannot make it this week. I cannot make it for the next two weeks. If they pay $25, 
a lesson, right? You think they will miss the lesson? Yeah, so that's, that's it, you know, you gotta put value in it and then it's, it's, it's a two-way thing, it's a two-way street. You know, it kind of guarantees your own personal discipline as well. If you really love the teacher, yeah, then maybe you'll go for the lesson. But money is just a very basic thing. Yeah, so, man, that's all I gotta say. Right. Okay, next question. <laughs> <laughs> question. Any questions? Okay, last one for you. <laughs> Okay, so another thing like uh, open classes in Singapore are like one hour and my teacher said, okay, she always has the problem of squeezing everything into one hour so um, if other teachers also have the same problem, why don't we like change it? Why do we stay with one hour? Uh, what, what do you feel? Do you feel if it's enough or it's not enough? Rain for yes, white for no? One hour is not enough. Yeah, one hour is not enough or one hour is enough? Rain for yes, white for no? Judges, three, two, one. This is yes, not enough. Great for yes. Yes, not enough. Yes. One hour enough, one hour not enough. No, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. Before I want to ask that, I want to ask that. Because I, I'm both uh, instructor and uh, employer, so it might not be nice. As a teacher, right, I feel that it should be one and a half hours. But as an employer, if I want to pay one and a half hour worth of salary, it's, it's, it's a different thing. And how much are dancers willing to pay for a one and a half hour class? So if let's say it's normal open class say 18. So if I were to one and a half hour, how many people are willing to pay 25, 26 for a class? So from the employee point of view, I have to pay my instructor one and a half hour work. So I'm taking one and a half hour of that time. So it depends back on the market like you guys like. But what do y'all think? If we increase one and a half hour, can y'all pay one and a half hour work? That's why we try our best to put as much content as we can within that one hour period. But of course, there will be like a bit, like extend by 10 to 15 minutes because we really just want to give it. So, one hour is going to be a bit hard for now, but probably in the near future, once street dance is really accepted in the market and people value it differently, then things will change. Because as of now, uh, you guys are at the other end of uh, the, the, the customer side. Once you, you will, there will be a time where you will cross over to this side. The, the receiving end. So when you are paying, you feel very expensive. But when you're on this side, you feel like you're not getting enough. So it depends on which side you're on. You, you will go through that transition, you know. So by then, when when the, the industry roughly understands it more, I think the one half hour can work. I think that's maybe right. in a few years time, yeah. Yeah, so my answer is, I don't know, that one, that's my answer. Thank you, Rani. <laughs> okay, any more questions? Like, really like short questions, like no elaboration. This, this is the segment, this segment is yes or no segment. I think life as an answer is So, has there ever been a time where you've been challenged or have you wanted to stop dancing? Yeah, this is actually one of the questions, but yeah. Oh, yeah. But, okay. Uh, okay, because life as an answer in Singapore is. I think life as an answer in general is a lot of So, has there ever been a time in your life where you feel like you needed to, or you wanted to stop dancing? Josh, Josh, that like you wanted to stop dancing and the rest doesn't want to stop dancing. I think the question is really like, why do you even start dancing? If you if you know that reason, it could be because like you just really love to dance. If you really love to dance, right, it doesn't matter the technique that you're learning of. You can just groove at any time in the shower, your streets, you know. That's dancing. How do you even stop dancing if you just love to dance? You get what I mean? It can just be a very response. But then if you, are, you started dance because you want to be famous, you want to be like top tier dancer, teach over worldwide everything, right? Then there might be a chance that you will stop dancing because you can't reach that. So it depends on why you start dancing. Okay? Alright, thank you. Okay, any more short questions? Yes. Okay, so uh this like as teachers has this concept of GD classes, should there be more GD classes in the song in the scene? Like the gym? <laughs> like for the rest of the instructor, can you repeat the question? He he wants to know that do you feel that it's necessary for the scene to have more drilling lessons? Like in Singapore, is it necessary? Yeah. Okay. Arahim answer answers yes because you are the one that created this. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's just three, two, one. Can I? Can I? Can I? Yes. Yes. Okay. 
So my answer is, if my answer would be yes, it's necessary. But the reason is because it's necessary. The ideal state, right, is where the teacher does not does not have to spend time drilling you. You have your own discipline to take what the teacher uh, 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 teaches you at that point in time during the open class, go home and train on your own. That's always been the mindset that I operated on, and I think that the mindset should be the same for all the other students as well. It shouldn't be a my teacher should be spoon feeding me, even for drilling, teaching me what to do at every single point in time. You should have discipline to go and do it. Yeah? I think that is a valid point as well, especially for street dance, right? Like, I was talking about jazz dancer, so technically, why last time locking we don't have lesson? Because I teach, I drill, I, I teach tech, le tech lessons. And that's why nobody wanted to come. Because the thing is, you go one lesson, then you learn how to drill, you learn my technique of drilling, then you go out already. You know, so I think lesson-wise, business-wise, and growth-wise, I think it is a very different thing. Yeah, I think it's a very, very different thing. Thank you, thank you, Jean, thank you, Josh. Anyway, people people, Jared, always have this uh, mindset, is that like, one hour class equal to three hours of training. Yes, see me. Okay, it's a bit sensitive. It's a bit sensitive. Hold on, hold on, I'm coming to you. How financially savvy are you guys and do you have any CPF savings? Huh? How financially savvy are you guys and do you guys are you guys prepared for the future? That is, do you have any CPF savings? Like are you stable financially and do you have any save saving in your CPF? Is it you want a yes or no or you want like it's okay to like talk about it? It's okay to talk about it, okay. You yeah, he, he's a full time like engineer by day, right? IT. Yeah. It depends on uh, our situation. Okay, honestly, like let me interrupt. Like I'll, I always have this thing like ever okay, if you don't know me, right? My name is Robin, I, I didn't study, I didn't pass my whole level. Okay, I only okay, so if you ask me my top education is either you can say it's N level. Right, okay, but I have been chasing my dream ever since. And everything else, right, just fall on place. You understand? It's like if I chase my dream, the money will follow me. That I know that doesn't answer the question, okay, but I just wanna I just wanna say that like yeah, you love your dream, you work hard for it, you prove yourself, yeah, the money should follow you. Yeah, but please go on, yeah. Okay. Do you do you feel that you are financially stable? Are you okay? And do you have saving in your CPF? I would like to think that I'm financially stable. <laughs> 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 I would say it can be a lot better. As in, for a freelancer, the money doesn't come in every month. Yeah, it takes a lot of discipline to to you are your own accountant as well. You know, so it kind of sucks because. Sometimes the money doesn't come in for a few months and you have been working on that project and you have to wait for the project to finish in about six to seven months before you receive that money. Yeah, so it's not easy. It's not easy. Sometimes you are just praying and praying that the money comes in and everything. And the money doesn't go to CPF. Okay, so it's really just like, uh, I have an advice. I don't do it yet because I don't think I'm financially that stable. But then go and find a financial consultant and get some savings plan. I think <laughs> no, honestly, I'm not. I'm not even like an insurance agent. But I think that really works well. But then, then again, if you want to pay off the monthly thing, then you better bring out the money coming faster, uh, You know. So freelance, not just dance. I think even for like richer and all that, you know, it's not gonna be easy. The money is not gonna come in every month. Tun tun. Uh. The most tun timing coming is during army. Uh. Four hundred dollars <laughs> now, I think financially stable, right? This word, right, in my opinion, right, is very big. Yeah. It's like, what do you mean by like financially stable? Everybody's financial, like, like, like they think financial stable, like stability is different. Like some people, for me, it's like, like some for some people, it's like, oh, I, I, I want to drive a car. That for them, that is financially stable. But for some people, it's like, no. I want luxury, I want to drive at most. For them, that is financially stable. So you have to ask yourself, if you want to be a dancer, can you achieve this kind of thing? That is my question back there. Like, do you, if you want this kind of luxury, 
then honestly, I think honestly I can say up front, don't be a dancer. Yeah, go and do something else. Dance by night. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, actually, know? I just want to add on. Uh, this one I actually learned from Robin. Yeah, he said, um, last time he shared with me something. I mean, we have been together for eight years already. So. so Asian society, right, we face a lot of pressure from our family, from our peers, like peers of your same level, they probably already started a family, they have stable jobs, whereas like dancers like us, uh, we are still like struggling in their eyes, we are struggling, but um, I, I mean, I, I'm also uh, um, from this, I also have this Asian mentality and concept like, oh, we have to be certain kind of financial stability to be able to be deem successful but he used to he told me he shared with me if he's not working in USS right he will work at Moss Burger or McDonald and then he would just go to RP and dance. He worked at Moss Burger at Causeway Point and then he just walked over R P and dance. So at the point of time when he told me that I like wow very sure eh? I said hello I'm a good friend hey girl <laughs> preparation <laughs> but when he shared me that, he said you sometimes you have to do the things that you don't like to do the things that you like. Sometimes you have to do the things oh, that you sorry, don't sorry. want to do ah, to be able to do the things that you want to do. That got me, you know. That really like, wow. That... <laughs> don't care about that. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, oh wow, shit. So I was thinking like, like if you, if you don't like what Jin say, if you don't want to invest in your passion, right? You don't want to try to find ways like, I mean, I, I really, I really quit. Um, I, I just quit USS lah because I worked there for six years. Financially wise, very stable. Every month, twenty seven, no problem. See, I open, I wake up, open my eyes. Wow, the sunshine. Twenty seven. Twenty seven of the month. Twenty seven. Of the month. <laughs> Rainbows and butterflies on the twenty eight. Yes, unicorns. Like wow. Yes, lah. Today I need to treat myself to a good meal. That kind of thing. So when I decided to quit, right? When we decided to leave the job, right? It's very scary. Because it has been a good six, seven years that I, before that I was teaching for three years and I, I thought six days a week. That was crazy. I was very tired. I was mentally tired. I think I wasn't prepared because I was very young. Back then I was like only 21, 22 and I was already teaching six days a week. That was crazy. And being the eldest in the family, I believe some of you here, you are the eldest in your family. You will feel the responsibility to take care of your family. So I found a job. I will say that my CPF is... I, I'm very thankful I got this job. That I'm still doing something that is physically dancing and performing. But I decided to left because I stopped growing. Yeah. I, I think I've been inside earlier than Sura. So I stopped growing and then I reached an important neck. And I decided... I actually, next year I'm turning 30 already. It's very scary, but I decided to do something for myself before, you know, I start a family. <laughs> yeah, so um, financially wise, you just have to really do the things that you don't want to do to do the things you like and you want. That's all I have to say. You really need to fight. If you give up, I think today, right, when we have this very deep and serious conversation, from your, your side, right, maybe you'll be like, you'll feel very stressed, you feel like, I don't want to be a teacher, I don't want to dance anymore already. But I feel, actually, right, everything will just fall in place for you. If you like something, if you like to dance, right, and you want to do it, right, it will just come. You just need to practice so, so hard, right? You practice so damn hard, right, when the opportunity comes for you, right? You are so ready for it. You practice not because of the battle tomorrow, but you practice for the many battles that you'll be fighting. It's not just for today or tomorrow. You have to be ready every time I say, okay, Anthony, replace my class next month. You must be ready. Because you say, oh no, I cannot, I cannot. Because people like us, right, we are seniors in the scene, right? We also want people to continue our legacy. So we are constantly trying to groom people, constantly on the lookout for people to continue our knowledge and our legacy. So I just feel, and we are, we for me, working, we are suffering, la, to be honest. We are suffering, we don't really have a lot of people. So it's very difficult, it's very difficult for our side also. But we just, I, I believe 
Love makes the world go round. And my quote is, do it the hard way. H-E-A-R-T, and the hard way. Do it the hard way. And as long as you do it the hard way, people can feel you. And then the money will follow you. <laughs> I don't know how to follow me yet, but... <laughs> <laughs> we got some time, we can still talk about this. Like, do you guys want to talk more or like, you guys want to let, let it end here? You guys want to talk more? Yeah, you have any question? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to ask, like, like uh, being a free like, battle dancer and a studio teacher, which one is actually more satisfying, which one is actually more so financially stable for you guys? Better dance as in B-A-T-K-L-E or B-A-T-K-L-E? Battle. Like battle? Yeah, like being a battler and being a performer. Performer or dance instructor? Like performer, instructor, that kind of stuff. I think Singapore nobody is living off battle. We don't have enough battles. You know, like that phase out, like group cash. Yeah, really. Like Vietnam. <laughs> 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 I think I think I like like the different scenes in let's say I don't know maybe Europe side where they have regular battles and there are actually people who. Yeah. Okay, there are actually people who really, really live on the streets and just they, when they're hungry and stuff and they really live on battles and they win it and they go eat. You know, kind of thing. So there, there are really people like that. But here, no one like you go at home, right? Most you go, go police station as well. Right? <laughs> so I don't think the battle side is really relevant here for, for Singapore scene. Mm, yeah, so very hard to answer though. Like, which one is better? But I kind of feel there's a correlation to it. It's related, kind of, in a sense. If you are good, if you perform well, or you train hard for battles, right? You get naturally you get better job opportunities, like to be a performer or to do shows and all. And vice versa, if you are good instructors, you get to do invited to do shows. So I feel like there's a correlation to it, lah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I want to know uh, what's your idea on uh, so-called street basking in Singapore because uh, got one uh, Japanese and one uh, one of them dancing over there he, he earned enough to sustain himself uh, then uh, I thinking like they must get all the license and everything like why as so-called we are the street house uh, why we never do such things is it that like, anyone try or like is it cannot do that? Actually, it's easy to get a license, the busking license. All you need is to just tell them how you're gonna generate power to your speakers without the socket. That is really like, really that's the question to become a busker. Now, but I think that's this really good question because when before I leave my job, I told myself, don't worry, man. I can do anything to survive, man. I'm gonna go bus, man. I'm gonna go. To <laughs> The way clothes are really don't wear money. Don't wear clothes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why? Okay, his question is why the street dancers are not doing this. <laughs> I think one, one, uh, maybe consideration is maybe if we are putting our art there for just really public to see. I think that was... Basking have, haven't really been a topic after I danced for a long time. Yeah, so I think maybe it kind of like... It may bring down your value, and then next time commercial shows won't pay you as much. I mean, that's what I think. Like, because you're putting yourself out there, like, you're not exclusive anymore. I want to watch you, okay, I'll go to Tampanese watch. Huh? I'll give you $2. Yeah, you know? And then nobody's gonna pay one dancer $500 just to do a DMT. Nobody's doing that, by the way, even without us basking. So we already suffer a little bit, you know? Or uh, we'll say, say something bad, but... Okay, <laughs> I rely on our students here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think that is one uh, consideration that it may bring down the value of the, the dance. I, I'm not too sure. But then, yeah, well, I think can try though. 
but locking for one hour straight, wow. <laughs> Standing up, training. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, one of the main why are we here today, right? Is we want to tell you guys that actually you cannot. Sorry. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, you cannot be. You, sh you shouldn't fit in, and you shouldn't. You shouldn't transform into someone you are not. Like if you don't want to be an instructor, you don't have to be an instructor. Like if you are not made to teach people, then don't. Like some people, they they, they want to perform more, then they become performer. If they want to be, they they want to become teacher, like instructor, like they want to teach people, you know, they want to inspire people. They see like they feel the energy from inspiring people, then they become an instructor. You understand? And then if you want, there's a lot of different ways to earn a living and to be part of this community. Yeah, so we are here to tell you that there's a lot of different opportunities you can explore, you know, through dancing. Right. Sorry, Robin, I got something to add on. Yes, yes, yes. So I think what I said just now was the cons, but off the top of my head now, maybe it's the pros. So it's kind of like if we pass, right, maybe an event organizer, you know, a wedding coordinator, see your dance, then like, oh, you know, locking is not even like a known dance to the masses right now. So like, if we are doing basking, it's just kind of, I mean, it guarantees a, a rate of, uh, you know, viewership also, and also exposure. So maybe the pros is, if you really want to bask, I feel maybe just go for it. You never know what kind of opportunities it will bring you. I think it applies to anything. Just take whatever comes. It may bring down the value, but it may also get you some jobs. I, you know, like some, some singers, they bask, then maybe Sony Entertainment like, oh man, you're good, okay, collab with this artist. Then now that like, they become, I think Ed Sheeran was the basker or something. Yeah, you know, so we never know, you know? Yeah, so it's not a good and bad thing. Uh. I mean, there's both good and bad, there's bad and good. Yeah, that's just my take on it. Okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay moving on, okay, like I would like to ask each and single one of you, okay, like, what advice would you have given to your younger self? This is a very good question from Simi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Me to me first. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, everybody. Okay. So, really, just do whatever you want, as long as you don't hurt anyone. You know, I wanted to take design, but I scared not enough money. But then I realized if I took design instead of customer relations, I wouldn't have quit school. Maybe I could have done something more. I realized if if I stopped locking just because people were making fun of me, I wouldn't be here today. I realized if I'm scared that I won't be able to become an MC and I reject KS to MC the get down to, I won't be MCing for seven years now. I would honestly honestly just say just Go for it. If you want it, go for it. You know, just don't be lazy. And there's no one answer. It's always a journey. So if you fail, get up. It's like, you know, business fail, you get up. You really need to do something. You know, it's, it's not easy. But in turn, you lose money, maybe you gain experiences. You know, things will come to you. Lah. So don't worry. Yeah. I wouldn't, I didn't want to become dance instructor, but I just fell into it and I love it now. Yeah, I may hate it next time, I don't know. But I'm just gonna see how it goes. Yeah, that's 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 for me. Still figuring out. Yeah, still figuring out shit. I think for me the one the one thing I would tell myself when I was really, really young when I started dancing was to realize uh, and I mean truly, truly realize the importance of getting your foundation and getting your history and your real knowledge done. Okay. When I started out, I've been dancing for 10 years, but I like to think that I've only been dancing for 8 or 7. Because my first 2 or 3 years consisted of watching YouTube videos, last time in 240p by the way. <laughs> and trying to, trying, uh, really, I mean, I emphasize trying, trying to copy and mimic what the dancers on the videos were doing. And because there was no one to tell me, or people told me that, foundation was important, but I ignored them. I said, I think more or less I'm doing the right thing. Right? But then, I started getting flack from people, a lot of flack, telling me, hey, you're not doing, you're not dancing properly. You know? And I started to go in battles and competitions and people said, 
people, you know, didn't, didn't give me the result I wanted. La. And I was feeling very down and didn't help the fact that other people around me, like Tony, Josh, you just stop dancing, you just quit dance. You, you know that period of my time, right? So, but after that, I decided, okay, enough is enough. I'm going to prove to the world what I got. I might not be the best dancer in the world, but I'm going to show you what the best of me is. So I started training hard. And I mean hard. If you see me at skate about six or seven years ago, I would be there every night. Three to four hours. I'm not talking to anyone. Uh. That's why people tell me I'm very quiet. <laughs> That's probably the reason why. Uh, party. Okay, I'll be there. I'll be sweating buckets. My sweat is dripping all over the floor. Okay, and I'll be training, training, training. And eventually, slowly, I started to you know, make a mark for myself. And I think to myself that if I had realized that earlier, gotten my foundation down, my, my, my knowledge down much earlier, I think the trajectory that I would be at would be different. So I that's one mistake I'll tell myself not to repeat again and I hope that it resonates with you also. But I hope that some of you can take away the lesson. For me, right? To be honest, right, I always feel that I start rarely. I started dancing at the age of 35. When I start dancing, right, you can ask for me. I stepped into the summer that time I was riding bike, okay? So I was in the studio with one helmet, right? All the, all the students are looking at me like, who the beep is this? <laughs> you know? So I think you're very handsome, man. So I thought that like, the helmet in the studio. <laughs> hey, hey, did this change the one? Show sure everybody. Yeah, just kidding. Okay, okay. Moving on. Yeah. Yeah. For me, right, then, I always feel like, I, after all this is what I've learned so far, right, I always regret like, what I didn't start this way. I was born in the right era, but I didn't start doing all the street stuff when I was young. I was like playing marbles, like climbing all the trains, you know, playing street stuff. But then, you know, but that was my, that, that was the old school stuff that I got, I got through, which also part of, me, part of what I am today. I still feel like because of that, this is what I am today. So, what advice I'll give to my younger self, to be honest, I wouldn't, I, I actually have done nothing to say to myself. Yeah. I'm grateful for what I am today. I'm grateful to have all of you like, who are supporting me for what I love to do today. Well, it's, I, I always feel like I'm a very blessed and lucky guy. Though I do have a business too. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, all, it's all a process. You, know, you go down, you have to climb it up. Once you climb it up, you're, 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 what does a kill you make you stronger? It's as simple as that. Okay? So just like believe in yourself, just know what you what you really like. Yes. Nice. Sweet la bo. Sweet la. Show the future, the amma. So yeah. Uh, okay, let me repeat the question again. What advice would you have given your younger self? Um, I think in this panel, probably. I'm the youngest hey, in terms what? of dancing. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, same as swimming. Um, I would. I regretted like I would have started earlier. Honestly, actually, I already. I was interested in dancing when I was in secondary school. When I was in set three, set four. If you know, because actually last time my juniors in secondary school were Marcus Young and Curry Pace. And at that time, they already had a hip hop crew in secondary school. So at that time, I was really very inspired by them, by my juniors, like, wow, this hip hop crew is like, so cool. That's when I made up my mind in Bali to join a dance club, TPDE. Yeah, so I kind of regretted, like, why I didn't start as early as when I was in secondary school. Yeah, that's the only regret. As for advice, with, um, in my first few years of dancing, I've, I kind of regret that I felt very. I felt the need to win. I felt the need for like accomplishment, like get into finals, this kind of thing. And even when I don't get into like top eight, I will be very disappointed. And sometimes it's <coughs> a bit stressful, um, unhappiness. And I feel like this shouldn't be the way. It's not about how many um, competitions you win. At the end of the day, it's about how long you can sustain. Yeah, that's all for me. Yeah, super, everybody. And for me, I'm just gonna keep it short. Uh, 
If you're in a toxic relationship, leave. <laughs> You have no idea the amount of how much it can drain you from your passion. Okay? And when they start to ask like, who is more important me or that? Leave. Okay, that's all. Yeah, continue, eh? Now we do it. That's what I was saying. Actually, yeah. Should have just started a family first, huh? then can focus on my energy. Um, I, actually, I only have one advice for my younger self, and that is to train harder. Yeah, I wish I trained harder. I really, I will, nobody there to. I think nobody there to say that I work very hard. Like nobody there because someone out there will be working even harder than you. They just don't say. Yeah, so. After I hear the story about B-Boy Gerald, which he, he can share with you, I won't share with you. Lah. So, well, I realized that, oh my god, the number of hours that he spent training his B-Boy, right? I told him, I say, if you spend the amount, same amount, right, on working, right, I give you one year, maybe you can win me, you know? I'm serious. It's like, he spent 12 hours a day <laughs> training B-Boy just to get the move or what. He, he told us that if you don't get the move, right, you punish himself by not drinking water. I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, so when I heard his story, I was like, wow. I wish I tr trained harder when I was young because naturally, as we get older, you know, your body, none of you very young, just now I see the way you all dance. Uh. Whoa. <laughs> Youth, eh? Vibrant, eh? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow, remind me, I saw my younger days over there on the dance floor, yeah. So, really, just don't waste time. Time is really. Money, really. Now we're talking about money. Uh. Let's not talk about the physical money by itself, but that time you really regret it uh, when you reach a certain age. Now, most of you are schooling, right? This is the best time, right, for you to balance your time in school because when you are in the workforce, uh, <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> when you need to pay the bills, uh. <laughs> next. <laughs> advice I would give my younger self is yeah practice harder why didn't I practice harder like maybe at the time uh, or at your time right now you might be facing a lot of commitments maybe to this group of friends to that group of friends but if you really had that passion or at that time or right now just go for it practice your ass off really because it's uh, one of my biggest regrets at that time. Yeah. Okay, to any one of you, like, if you have to give one piece of advice to the audience, what would it be? Something like that. It's okay. Like, anybody else? Any one of you? Uh, actually, I will say you have to be thick-skinned. You have to be really thick skin. If you want something, you go for it. I shared with you a little story about myself. Before I do street dance, right, I was I was in a modern dance club in my secondary school. So I was very into jazz. Like jazz, ballet, tap. So into it. I was so into it. But it's jazz, if you think our classes are expensive, right? Jazz, tap and ballet classes are way even more expensive. Because you have to take exams, you don't pass the first level, you cannot move on to the level two. So you know what I did when I was 17, 18 after I left uh, secondary school when I was in poly. I actually just went to Google and just typed how where to learn jazz in Singapore. So I just click on the first thing that comes up. Uh. So I just go to the school and I took a few classes and then I, after that I, I I was the only Asian kid. Most of them were all like the Caucasians and the the and all the stuff like that. So I was the only Asian. So being the only Asian, I, but I, I wear, I wear gapo, I wear gara, I don't care, I don't care. So I just continued it, and I was working. I don't, actually, I don't know where my money come from. Right? <laughs> I don't know like, I'm working somewhere part time. I don't know where like, maybe. Uh, <laughs> kidding. No, so I was like, I was really hungry at that point of time. So I actually approached my teacher, you know, 
I actually said I really want to learn, I really want to continue. And she saw my passion. La. So she said, you know what, I really think that you really want to do this, right? So she gave me, she taught me for free. She taught me for free. In return, I, I, I helped her with some stuff la, like assist class and stuff like that. And she taught me for free for like one, two years ago. She, I don't have money, I don't even have money to buy ballet shoes or tap shoes. She gave me, because the students are so rich, every year they change shoe. So I, I inherit the second-hand shoes. Yeah. So that to, to me, if you really want something right, go for it. Go to the group. If you want to learn something and you really love teacher, if you love that person or you love that teacher, go to the person. I think I will speak for us. If really somebody come and say, Mel, I will wish to leave. But I will think, you know, because I want people like that. I want people who are really hungry and willing. But of course, you know, pay some money. Lah. <laughs> 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 you can't think for money. Money follow me. Money come, come, come. <laughs> yeah, but I actually prefer like this kind of students. But I speak of, to us, we don't really teach. Sometimes, of course, we need the money. But if if I compare if I this student who's so bloody hungry and what he really say, me I'll train me, I want, I want. Every day come to me, ask me questions, pester me, disturb me, I don't want to take it anymore. I want, I like, I like this kind. Yeah. So I, I just say uh, like, Yeah, yeah, for me, my advice for you guys is um, don't take that, that second one, don't take the one step forward then the two step back, that kind of feel. Just take two step forward, go for it. Yeah. Okay, um, I will say this lesson because I've got experience watching young people dance in SMU Farm Movement because I set, I set up the club. One thing I realised that um, um, is an issue among the younger generation is that with um, the technology that we have, the lifestyles that we lead, okay, everything is on instant. Even Google is not instant. Right? You want your answers, they're there. You want to see something, it's on YouTube. You want to see raw footage that last time you cannot find, it's there now. Right? But what's the problem with this? It creates an expectation in all of the younger dancers that things are instant. You watch them, you copy them one time, that's it, you got the knowledge. You go for class, one class, two class, three class, you don't want to do their wave, okay, that's it, your wave is master class. Right? Okay, but that's not the truth. Because the truth is, to be a good dancer, you, you must be a good person, of course, that's the start. But to be a good dancer, the important part is the journey. You don't go through trials, you don't go through difficulties, you don't fall on flat and make mistakes. Right? You will never get good. You will never be the level that you think you want to be. Okay, so what I want to tell all of you is sometimes um, do it the hard way. Okay, don't just go for the easy way. Okay, um, when people tell you to go through the standard stuff, like go through this whole series of classes, 10 classes, go for it. People tell you to train 100 hours in a month, do it. Because the benefits that you get from that right, are something that you cannot see at the start but they will pay off handsomely many 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 years down the road. When you can do something and then do the other thing at the same time and combine them together, that's not something you can learn in just one or two hours. So, so okay, this, this mindset that we have now of instantness, it's not the truth. It's an impression, it's an illusion. Okay, so remember that when you're practicing. Remember that, okay? It's not hard, but we all, as human beings, have to do it the hard way. Yeah. Right. And the just like to add on from Josh, like, uh, especially when you learn a new genre, like for street dance, uh, like just to get the fresh note alone, it doesn't take like one or two lessons to. Oh yeah, I I took two lessons of popping. Yeah, I know how to do the fresh note. You know what I mean? For just to get your hits right. It doesn't take just one or two lessons. It takes hours and maybe even years of practice just to understand how to move, how to do that move. So, just to add on from, from what Josh said, really, is this, this dance, this whole street dance thing, is all about practice, 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 practice. There's no such thing as like, yeah, I take three lessons in popping. Yeah, I, I, I can, I can, I can. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah, you know, there's so much 
there's so much more that even us we can still improve, you know. So it's always it's, our this journey is keep, it keeps going. It doesn't it doesn't stop. We also don't know where it will stop. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Uh, one thing one ask for me is uh, <coughs> regarding this topic on like haters. Okay. So uh, I think people are spending a lot of energy on haters and stuff like that. But I think when you have haters, you are actually doing something. Okay, so uh, basically a hater is basically someone who thinks you don't deserve a certain level of success or recognition that you are having. So which means you are actually having a certain level of success or recognition. Alright, so I mean that's something right that you do. Okay, if you don't have haters probably, you gotta do, you gotta do more, you know. So just go and get yourself some haters, go do something, right? <laughs> I'll just put some reality here. No matter what you do in life, right, there are people who say you are good and there are people who say you are bad. No matter what you do. Even from point A to point B, right, you walk this way, right? There will be people who say, oh, I go damn fast. Eh. How, how do you do that? Teach me. There will be this group of people here, say, hey, you spoil market wait for me, lady. You know? I'm sure you, I'm sure you understand that. But the, real, the next reality is, right, most of people are here who are talking shit about you. The, the, the most important thing is right, how uh, affected are you by all this, all this stuff? Right? Because when your mind is not strong enough, right, high chance you don't want to be left out, you will join them. That's where you, you know, you feel like, oh, you, you, you subconsciously join a, a negative group. Okay? But of course, you know, like, it's really choosing. So if, 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 you're, if, you, if you understand this part, these people who don't appreciate what you're doing, just let them be. You'll find somebody else who they can appreciate. You know. Then you can slowly you learn no more people who are really understand the direction you're moving towards. So try to see who's around you, who's supporting you. Yeah. And another thing I want to say, right, is to don't get too comfortable with what you're doing. The moment you get too comfortable, you are not improving. It's as simple as that. I'm sitting on this sofa here, very comfortable. <laughs> the only thing that's growing is my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, if you're uncomfortable, right, that's, that's why your, your body starts to work and start to improve. For me, right, uh, I'll just put a rest, uh, my own experience. I started DJing for dance event since 2012. For me, right, dance event is something that is comfort comfortable to, for me. If I just want to spin one set for a dance event. But then, how do I push it further? How do I push it further for all of you who are coming from the event? You know? At first, right, I'm just doing it. I'm just playing music for the dancers who are battling. Now, and then I feel like, oh, that, that's the more knowledge I get, the after that, like, oh, actually, that's not true. There are so many of you that actually paid to come in here. Why are we speaking for those two, two, two persons at that one time? It doesn't make sense. Okay, so that's why I start to get a couple with myself that actually I should look at the whole room. Who's here? What kind of music I should play for these people? Because if you are the one battling, right, I ask you one question. Who are the ones vibing those two dancers? The audience, the judges, or the each other? You know, most of the time it will be the audience. They will give you the most fun. If I can play music that hype the audience, that will eventually hype the dancers, what kind of battles will we get? If I just play for the battlers, then they are hyped, but then the audience don't feel anything, right? What kind of battles will you get? You know what I mean? There's a lot of things that I'm going through that, that make myself uncomfortable with how to create a better event for Then eventually I also get opportunity, opportunity to play the club. That's a totally different game. I'm super uncomfortable. <laughs> to be honest, I'm super uncomfortable. But then I still went with it. There are so many things I learned over there that I took it back when I played for dance events. That's how I go. So don't be too comfortable. You can be sometimes, but not always. Okay. Yeah, um, actually, they pretty much say a lot of things, but a lot is about talking about dancing hard, practicing hard, but as I see people around me getting injured, I think you need to take care of yourself also, know your body limits. You want to practice this particular move, but make sure you don't get injured. And if you do try to get injured, um, do rest up. Like if the doctor say you can't dance for one month, then don't dance for one month. 
course, if you still continue dancing for one month, then after that, the injury doesn't get better, then you can't dance anymore, ever, like ever. Yeah, so I'd rather you stop the one month, rest up properly, and continue dancing again. That's all. Okay, to end it off, right, like, I would like to say something, like, whatever I say, whatever I think, like, my way is for myself. And my job here, or our job here, like, is to help you find yourself. My way will not be the right way. I want to be a very, 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 very good dancer. I wish one day I can be one. I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to pursue my dream. I'm going to push my fears aside. This is what I'm going to do. But if I look at you, and then you tell me, oh, I prefer to do this, but am I still your friend? Am I still part of the community? I'll say yes, of course. I love you for who you are. You understand? It's like, <laughs> this is why we are here today. We give you different examples to let you explore the opportunities through dancing. Okay, everybody? Okay, thank you for today. And to sum it up, let's, let's take a picture together. Picture you think it's possible? Thank you.